Hello, my name is Adam Mokter, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Sarkozukus. Now, before we start, when it comes to fighting as a Sarkozukus, the fighting style is one of the more unique ones. So, in this video, I'm going to give you permission to be critical. However, I will ignore any biased bullshit. We'll be going over the following topics. However, due to the nature of Sarkozukus, the field on where you can fight as are way more limited compared to other creatures. At least, if you try to play solo as this thing and you want to fight on LAN, then your chances of winning are pretty slim. At least depending on what or who you're fighting. I'll go more in depth about this later, but for now let's cover Arsenal. We have two slots for head abilities and four options. The first one is Clamp. As long as stamina allows, you can kidnap anyone at a certain size. Crushing Bite is a charge up bite that deals the highest damage I put in game at least among the official carnivores. Then we have the standard bite. Don't look down upon it. Sarkozukus is still a crocodile, crocodilian, alligator. I'll let you decide on what category Sarkozukus falls under. Asphyxiation snap are basically just a chokehold, but with your mouth. I don't know why, but that sounds kinda kinky. Sensibilities, you have three options. The first one are drenched blows. Short version, you like them wet. Then we have Ambush, which I feel like it takes the saying luck favor the one who strikes first a bit too literally. Again, water goggles. Do anyone even use this ability? You have two options for hide. First, Resilient Scales and Streamliner. Ignore the fact that you see four options there. The first ability, a lunge. The only bad thing about this ability is the goddamn cooldown. Oh, and it can't be used on land. Gator Dash is basically the land version of lunge. Armored Tail is just an ability I doubt anyone even uses. At the time of this video, I guess the arsenal was just glitched, since the fourth option are just lunch again. Your arsenal, especially the head abilities, depends on what you're fighting. Certain abilities are better suited towards specific creatures. It also changes depending on how you're planning to fight. More on this later. Because the arsenal needs to adapt to the situation, I will leave the final choice to you. Sarkozukus has the potential to dish out one of the highest damage output from the carnivores, meaning that the attack subspecies are kinda pointless to choose, since the potential of the damage you can dish out are already pretty good. The Sarkozukus HP, however, falls low even among the low tiers. Yes, I know that some servers can change these stats, but I'm talking about the default stats. This means that the Sarkozukus are the very definition of a glass cannon, highly focused to be an ambush predator. Despite the Sarkozukus lack in potential when it comes to brawling, there are other ways they can fight, and depending on which one you choose, either armor or swimming speed can be one of the better choices. However, if you want a definitive answer, I would go for armor, since it's more flexible and not limited to one terrain. And speaking of terrain... When it comes to terrain compatibility, the Sarkozukus are heavily semi-aquatic, which means that you are basically a god if you fight in salt flats. Not because you have the terrain advantage, but you're giving up all of them. Obviously the best places you can fight are by a river, and as far as fighting style goes, doing drive-bys are basically the best way you can fight as one of these creatures. Your land speed are nothing to brag about. You do have abilities that give you a short burst of speed, however due to its limitations and your low HP bar, the moment you find an enemy that has decent damage output, your chances of victory are getting slimmer. I'm not saying that the Sarko can't fight at all on land, I'm just saying that due to its stats, any fights it finds itself in, let's just say they're not favorable. It might be cowardly, but you really need friends to do a successful strike and a successful getaway. Okay, maybe against mid tiers and apexes you need more people, but when it comes to low tiers, all people you can grab. At first I felt bad, but now, grabbing people and then drowning them, it has become a guilty pleasure. Grabbing them and then drowning them is the simplest way of dealing with low tiers, or at least the creatures you can grab. And when they are in water, it is up to you on what to do with them. You can grab things as heavy as an armored potato, 
And honestly, since this update came out, the Anodontosaurus really was the one who got the shortest end of the stick. The clamp doesn't prevent it from using its attack, however it does force the Anodontosaurus out of its hunker down ability. I remember the times when everybody was mad at the Anodontosaurus for being stupidly overpowered. Now look at it. Oh how the mighty have fallen. In any case, back to fighting lower tiers. The Sarkozukus has potential to win brawling against the creature who has lower stats. While its HP bar are quite low, its damage output is what's keeping it at the rank of Apex, or at least on land, Pseudo Apex. This is why when you're meeting creatures such as these, it is good to have the standard bite. The strategy for this situation are pretty simple. Your speed may be lacking, but your ability to turn on spot are just phenomenal. All you really need to do is just to predict where your opponents are going, and then let your enemy run into your bite. And just for the record, regardless of my friend's intervention, I could totally have defeated these Nasa Triceratops on my own. Dealing with lower tiers through brawling are definitely one way to defeat them. However, I prefer to kidnap them. Like I said before, anything with decent damage output is a threat. That's why I categorize Apex and mid tiers together, because, well, you know, they have rather decent damage output. Most of them at least. Because you have a low HP, you can't afford a brawling contest. Which means you need to be constantly moving, and, well, let's just say your stamina aren't infinite. All of your attacks aren't reliable in this situation, meaning you will have to rely on your charge up bite. And on land, you don't have the mobility, so it is really easy to dodge it. Again, on land, anything with significant damage output is a threat to you. The only way for you to really beat them is by having companions, or a friend to take all the attention off you. Kinda cavernly, yes, but in your defense, you are giving up all of your advantages and putting yourself at a major terrain disadvantage. You're allowed to have a friend or two. On land, your performance are limited, but in water, it is a whole nother story. Out of all the creatures, Sarkozukus might be the one creature who is the best qualified for water fights. It is fast, agile, and what's more, it can deliver devastating bites. If you use your asphyxiation snap, you can drain your opponents for stamina, rendering them helpless to your attack. Once they are out of stamina, or once they start slowing down, that is when it's easier for you to deal so much damage with the crushing bite. Of course, you just need to make sure that you keep moving and stay clear of their attacks. If you use the strategy of draining your opponent's stamina and then laying into them with a crushing bite, any water fights are basically guaranteed your win. Even the mightiest of Apexes will have no choice but to run. In water, the Sarkozukus definitely claims the title as an Apex. Only on land is its fighting capabilities limited. This is why Evolution decided not to invest more during the Caprosuchus time, it would become major balancing issues later. So to sum it all up, against low tiers, it is up to you, you can decide to try and do a head to head brawling, you do have the potential to win in those fights, or you can do it the more fun way, to kidnap them and drag them into water. For mid tiers and apexes, Instead of trying to solo them, just go at them in a pack. Either that or do hit and run by going in and out of the water with charged bite. Yes, you might not be able to kill all of your enemies, but hey, if you can send them running, that's a W for you. In water fights, use your stamina draining ability to drain them for stamina, and then use your crushing bite to finish them off. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, go to my community post, find the most recent post regarding the matter, and all the information should say right there. With that, I have nothing more to say and I will bid you guys adieu. Goodbye!